friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, February 19th, and it is cold. Uh, not as cold as it could be in February. About 29 degrees when I got up this morning. Uh, still around 29 degrees. Getting into the 50s today, so I can't complain. But Yeah, um, enjoying a Bari pipe. This is a gift from my dearly missed friend Danny Shore and you can see this thing has got some really ugly fills on it but I just love it uh, and it's that a nice pot shape rather tall uh, but pot shape that I love so much and what I am smoking today and has just gone out on me is a blend that Doug Owen sent me <clears throat> kindly sent me as a gift this is a uh, Virginia gentleman and it's funny because you know Doug has a lot of blends at the cargo hold that are you know his his blends which are basically other uh, how do I put this relabeled blends as most brick and mortars do today very few brick and mortars actually blend but they sell blends by their own names. So I got this and I saw Virginia Gentleman cargo hold and I thought, hmm, I don't know what this is. And I smoked it, oh, I think I smoked it on a live stream, uh, not this past week, but the week before. And I said, it, it reminded me a lot of Orion's Arrow from Cornell and Deal. It wasn't Orion's Arrow, I knew that, but it, it, was, it was reminiscent of that. The blend itself is a uh, Virginia forward blend. It's Virginia Burley, but very Virginia forward. And it does have some Orientals in it. So anyway, I decided to do some detective work and figure out what this was. <laughs> and during the live stream when I was smoking it, Doug actually said, it's a Cornell and Deal product. So I, ah, I'm going to find this. So I go to, you know, search for Cornell and Deal. And, and, you know, you can go on Smoking Pipes, I think it is, and you can actually search by brand and then by component. So I had Burley and Virginia. And the first one that pops up is Cornell and Deal Virginia Gentleman. I didn't know <laughs> that he was just giving me the name of the thing. So I didn't have to be Sherlock Holmes after all. Um, so Virginia Gentleman is a blend of um, Virginia, Burley, and Orientals. I, I believe Turkish. The Virginia is mostly red, but there is some bright Virginia in there, and, and it comes through in the flavor. And i got to tell you, I like this. Um, you guys have heard me say a million times I'm not a Virginia guy, but... The one Virginia I like, I really enjoy, is uh, GLP's Union Square. It is a straight Virginia, no toppings, no casing, just nice, clean tobacco flavor. Um, it's delicious stuff. It's got that deep caramel-like sweetness that comes from those uh, those fermented red Virginias. And it, it's just it's a beautiful blend, uh, Union Square. This, the Virginia in this, reminds me of Union Square. It's got a slightly rough edge to it, but it's got that very deep sweetness that I like in a Virginia. And while it's very Virginia forward, there's definitely burly in there. You're getting some some of those nutty, woody, molasses-y kind of notes from it. And I think the Orientals in this are just perfect. There's just enough there that it adds that slightly sour note to it and kind of brings it together. Uh, this is a really nice blend. And, and the neat thing about it is that while it is Virginia forward and you're getting that Virginia flavor, you're not getting a lot of that tart, harsh Virginia nonsense. And uh, it's not biting at all. Uh, and by biting, I mean just sharpness on the tongue or hot heat. Uh, I don't mean actual tongue bite. This is, it's, it's mellow, it's, it's um, smooth, it, 
It's really good. And while it's not going to be something I'm going to be smoking a lot of because I'm more of a burly forward guy, um, I would gladly uh, have this in my cellar. And I don't know. You know, I never liked this it could be an all day blend comment because well, what couldn't be an all day blend really? But this is this could so it's complex and, and I enjoy that and yet at the same time it's something that you could just stuff in your pipe and light. I mean it, it's it's uh I should have told you about the cut here. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get it out of the bag and show you, but you can see through the bag. It's a it's a nice ribbon cut, packs well, lights well, stays lit. Just a no nonsense blend with a lot of a lot of flavor and complexity. If you want it, if you don't want it, it goes into the background and you just enjoy the smoke. So yeah, good stuff. Virginia Gentleman by Cordella Deal. Now you know I'm a Cornell and Deal fanboy and actually have my Cornell and Deal 50th anniversary lighter out here. They played an important part in my development as a pipe smoker and I've enjoyed their tobaccos for a very long time now. But they have such a extensive catalog that even though I've been smoking Cornell and Deal tobacco for Oh gosh, what has it been now? Uh, close to 30 years. I uh, I didn't know they made Virginia Gentlemen. And when I look, you know, if I, if, like sometimes smoking pipes will have a sale. I'll say, oh, let me see what else Cornell and Dillman. It, it's just like, I didn't know they made that. It's pretty, pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, some, some would say it's too much, but when there's hidden gems like this buried in their, uh, their catalog, I, I, I think that's a wonderful thing. You get to find them. So thank you, Doug, for uh, for sharing this with me. It's really, it really is a wonderful blend. And if you, if you're a guy who likes Virginias but doesn't like the sort of bitey, bright Virginias, uh, give this a try. So, <clears throat> I had fun yesterday. <laughs> I really had a lot of fun. Uh, so, a friend of mine, I've known since high school. I mean, we met first year of high school. And uh, we've been friends ever since, except for a couple of times when, you know, you know how things are. You get, you get in an argument over something stupid and, well, ah, go to hell. And then you don't talk to someone for months, maybe a year, maybe longer. And then all of a sudden one day you, you, you get a call or you think to yourself, hmm, I wonder, and you call. And uh, that friendship just rekindles like nothing ever happened. And that's the kind of guy this is. I've, I've known him, again, since I was a freshman in high school. And uh, he's, he's the best friend I've got. He's the closest friend I've got, certainly. Uh, I know if. If something really bad is happening to me, he's the first person I contact. And we probably talk once, maybe twice a month. Uh, we stay in contact with text messaging and, and that kind of stuff more frequently. And when we talk, it's never, it's funny. My, my wife, you know, I'll say, I'm going to go call him and, and, and like an hour later. Because uh, we do, we do talk for a while, which is unusual for guys, but... You know, we'll catch up, and then my wife will say, "So how is he?" You know, like I don't know. We can, you know, how, how's this? How's that? And we don't talk about those things. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just love the guy, and uh, hope that he's uh, he's always a part of my life. Anyway, he is a filmmaker, and this is something. When I met him, he wanted to be a filmmaker, and he was making movies. Uh, it had a little, I guess they were Super Eight cameras back then. And uh, I helped him out with some stuff. Actually, not then. It wasn't until we were in college. Got to help him with some of his, uh, you know, film course. Because he went 
to college for to be a I guess a film major I don't know what it's called uh, the, the program at Temple was radio television and film so I guess that's what his degree is in and uh, you know he'd have these projects where he'd have to make a short film for this or that and I'd help him with uh, making sets sometimes sometimes I, act, I acted in at least one I think two maybe um, yeah we it was just a lot of fun, you know, something that, as, a, as somebody that was all into math and science and stuff, it was very different for me. And uh, anyway, he, he called up and he said, you know, I'm trying to build this thing and I, I need some help. Can you think you could give me a hand? And I said, sure. Uh, and it sounded like it would be a lot of fun. So I went down there yesterday into his workshop and we built a big giant thing. And I'm going to show you some pictures, but let me let me give you a little bit of a setup. So he's making a film where somebody has to jump through a uh, big rosette stained glass window in a church. Okay, so they're coming into the church through this window. And so to do this, he had to make a mock-up of the wall. And we need to put a breakaway glass window into this open circle in the wall so that the person can can jump through it. All of this work is for what's going to be, what, two, three seconds of a film. Uh, it's a lot of work to get this right. And he does a lot of, um, you know, the, the, the scene, it's, he's very clever in terms of having a small set that looks like a big set. And he showed me some of the surrounding scenes for the shot and you'll see a picture of the wall in a minute and you'll say well that's kind of small but he uses these in a way that you know when you get the camera angle right and you position them correctly it looks like you're in this giant uh cathedral basically so it's, re it's really cool to see how people can do that it's very very artistic anyway i'm going to show you some pictures to give you an idea of what i did yesterday and then talk more about the actual experience so let's see Okay, so this is the, the set, the front of the set piece we're working on. This is not finished, it still needs to have some painting applied to it, but you can see it's basically a stone wall with a hole in it, which is what he's going for. And that hole, the big round thing in the center, is six feet in diameter. To give you an idea of the scale there, that's a, uh, a big garage door back behind it. Uh, so when this is actually in the film it's going to look like a stained glass window in a church and somebody's going to come leaping through that and the glass is going to break it's going to be breakaway glass and all that stuff so we need to actually position the window behind it and anchor it down in a way so that when the person jumps through they don't shake that structure that you see right now so what we did yesterday was we built this uh, you can kind of see this is the back of what I just showed you and that hexagonal hexagonal uh, frame was the first thing we built and that is going to hold this large uh, rosette window and the actor is going to come from behind and jump through that hoop and hopefully not hit the, the set so the challenge wasn't making the hexagon. That was that was fairly simple to do, uh, but the challenge was to to make it stable enough so that it doesn't, when the actor hits the window, it doesn't lurch forward and hit the the rest of the set. And here you can see the the, the way we did that. So we built a frame uh, that holds that hexagon in place, and the base of that frame there's going to be a lot of sandbags put on it to to stabilize it and hold it down. And then there'll be a ramp put in front of it. So the hope is the guy's going to run up that ramp, leap through that hoop, leap through that circle, which will have a breakaway glass window in front of it, and come crashing through on the other side. Again, all of this for, oh, maybe maybe three seconds of, of video footage. So it's a lot of work. That took us all day just to get to that point. He had made the brick facade, the, the stone facade thing. But all the rest of the stuff we, we constructed yesterday. And it was a lot of fun. You know, I, I drove down there. I took took tools. Uh, took my chop saw and a bag of hand tools. And 
he had the wood, uh, which was actually stuff salvaged from previous sets and all that. So that was a bit of a challenge because there were nails in it and stuff. We had to spend more time taking nails out of things than I spent building things. Uh, but we got we got the hexagon all together. Uh, went and got some lunch. Uh, he kindly bought lunch for me because uh, you know not I'm not getting paid for this and I don't want to be paid for it. He's, he's a friend and I'm happy to help him out. But uh, he insisted on buying lunch and then we got back to it and I was there till you know fairly late last night working on this and yeah I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the progress we made. So I've got to go back one more time and come up with a more, right now that hexagon is just clamped in place to, to get an idea of how it's going to work. We got to center it on the window and then we're going to bolt it to that frame. The idea being that he can unbolt it, take it down, build the window in it, and then bolt it back up. Mm -hmm. So still some work to be done there and then we got to build the ramp. So I'm probably going to go down there next weekend and we'll, we'll do this one more time. I say down there because I'm north of him. Uh, he lives much closer to the city. And uh, yeah, so it was, it was fun. And I realized as we were doing this, I mean, first off, I haven't seen him in a while. So it wasn't just nice to see him and to catch up. But like I said, we talk pretty regularly. So it's not like we're strangers. But there's something about working together. There's something about actually doing things with your hands when you're a guy. I don't know if this is true for women. I can only speak for the, the men because that's what I am. Uh, and yes, I do know what that means. When you work together as men, you it puts you in a different frame of mind. And when your hands are busy, you communicate differently. I personally think that men share things best when they're working. Uh, I, I don't think we're very good at sitting down over coffee and, you know, talking about how we feel about things or, you know, any of that stuff that women seem to just love to do. It's when we're working that those things come out. Uh, and I think it's a shame that we've gotten to a point, you know, when, when I was looking for images for, for that little intro picture that I use, I searched for men working together. Every single image was a guy in a suit sitting at a conference room table, uh, guys huddled around a computer, guys uh, looking at cell phones. Uh, there wasn't a single image of two guys, you know, laying bricks or digging a hole or, you know, that's work. And uh, I'm afraid that as we do less and less of that, as we become more computer-based, technology-based, uh, you know, you don't, you don't build circuit boards together. You don't write software together. You do in conference rooms where you talk about it and stuff, but you're not using your hands together. We're losing something there. Uh, and I don't, you know, I know that stuff's important. I know we got to do it, but I think that's why it's so important to, you know, be a, be a wood turner and be a member of a wood turner's club. Uh, be a woodworker and be a member of a woodworkers club or be a gardener and be a member of some gardeners association or something but be a part of something where you can get together with other guys and do things uh, years ago I used to be part of the men's group at my church and uh, we used to do the the groundskeeping for the for the church every spring we'd weed and, and put mulch down and stuff like that. And that was hard work because it was a fairly large piece of, of land that we had to take care of. And, but, you know, we'd get like 20 guys out and we'd, you know, have pickaxes and, and shovels and hoes and, and, and we'd all be, you know, hot and sweaty and, and, and achy and complaining about our backs and everything else. But, but we also talked. You know, we talked about the church, we talked about our, our religion, our, our faith, uh, we talked about our families. It was, it was a great experience, and we need that. As men, we need that in our lives. And women, you need something in your lives too. I don't know what it is, because you're a mystery to me. Don't mean to exclude you, but you're mysterious.
I was listening to uh, the Mortis and Tenon podcast. If you don't know what Mortis and Tenon is, it's a really fantastic magazine that comes out a couple times a year. I've been subscribed to it for, for quite a long time now. And a uh, wonderful magazine, all about pre-industrial uh, handwork. And these guys have a podcast. It's two two gentlemen that uh, live up in Maine and live this lifestyle, where they're woodworkers that only use pre-industrial tools. They don't use any uh, electricity, other than lighting. I guess I don't even know if they have lights in their shop. Uh, they built the shop. That's actually part of the story: is the building of their shop and the building of a of a forge, uh, a, a shop for a, for a forge and everything. And it just they're, they're, they're really interesting folks, and they have this podcast, and I was listening to one of the back episodes I was driving yesterday, and they were talking about this, the joy of, of using your hands to make something, and the fact that when we use, so I, the, the question becomes, what, why do we want to get done fast? You know, why do we need to speed through cutting that piece of wood with a table saw? When there's joy in cutting it, you know, when we can we can feel that rather than fuel it with a, a coal fire generator or something uh, seventy miles away from us, feel it with what you had for lunch that day. And one of the guys actually said that I I I, I feel the cutting of that wood by by the power of my arm, which comes from the lunch I ate that day. Uh, really interesting way to think about it. And there's nothing wrong with power tools. Believe me, I use them, but there is something very special about working, you know, actual physical manual labor. Well, I've babbled enough now. Hopefully you have heard something about what I think regarding the joy of working and especially the joy of working with a friend or friends. Because that's what I hope to talk about. I don't know if I got to it. <laughs> And I highly recommend Virginia gentlemen. Uh, if you're if you're somebody that likes the Virginia with a bit of burley in there and a little Oriental twist to it, it's a great blend. Uh, smooth, mild, good stuff. Well, with that, friends, I'm going to draw this to a close. I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday and are looking forward to the week ahead. It is International Pipe Smoking Day Eve, so happy International Pipe Smoking Day tomorrow. And uh, get out and smoke a pipe. That's what it's all about. Let somebody see you smoking a pipe. Uh, be an ambassador for pipe smokers. So enjoy that. I'll be back on Friday with, uh, with the live stream. And uh, who knows, maybe something between now and then. And uh, of course, I'll be back next week. So until we meet again. I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Bye now.